In this lecture, I will discuss the possibilities to adapt existing steel structures, which are originally not designed for earthquake circumstances, to the effects of seismic action caused by the extraction of natural gas in the province of Hörninge. For design of new steel structures, designers need to comply with the NPR 1998, it's a Dutch guidelines, the relevant parts of Eurocode 3, design of steel structures, and Eurocode 8, design of structures for earthquake resistance. They are supported in doing so correctly by numerous literature, design guides, and the background reports about Eurocodes. When building a steel structure, designer has to choose a steel grade from table 3.1 in Eurocode 3 part 1.1 and select an appropriate steel quality according to the procedure described in Eurocode 3 part 1.10. This should be done to guarantee that steel material is sufficiently ductile, considering the use of the structure. But even if the steel material is ductile, the structure can still have a low ductility. This depends on design of joints and connections. When there is no danger for earthquake actions, there is only need for at least low ductility, although even in those cases the preference is to have at least medium ductility. If in a connection the bolts in tension or in a shear are decisive for the resistance, the structure will exhibit a brittle type of behavior. However, not really brittle behavior because this is prevented by the selection of the appropriate steel material. If the plastic strains are confined in small areas with little deformation lengths. Because of that, the strains reach rather quickly the ultimate tensile strain and the material will break while the structure still shows small deformations. This is so-called the brittle type failure. This also holds for the valves. A structure exhibits ductile behavior when bending of plates in joints or ductile sections are decisive for resistance of the structure. For upgrading existing steel structures, the task of the designer is more complex. First of all, one has to analyze the structural behavior to see whether the steel structure behaves ductile or that the behavior seems to be more brittle. Existing steel structures in the province of Herningen are mainly used for agricultural buildings like stables and storage facilities, for industrial halls, office buildings, schools or other buildings for public services. They are originally designed for combination of static and quasi-static loading, like self-weight loading resulting from the use of building life load, and natural loads from wind and snow. The question is how to upgrade such existing steel structures, originally not designed for earthquake actions, to cope with these seismic actions. Let's have a look at the peach roof frame for agricultural use and a two-story office building and make example calculations to see what the consequences are for these structures. These buildings were originally designed for combinations of self-weight resulting from the use and natural loading such as wind and snow load. Now they are also subjected to earthquake actions like those in Hörnige. In the main frame direction, peach roof frames for agricultural use are mostly designed as unbraced frames with three hinges, two at the base plates of the columns and one in the pitch connection. To evaluate whether the frame can take the earthquake action, although it was not designed for it originally, the designer has to determine the actual rotational stiffness, the moment resistance and rotation capacity of the joints, which are originally accepted as being hinges. This is possible because in steel frame structures, the joints designed as hinges are actually not hinges because of their physical configuration. In most cases, it is possible to show that the structure can take the seismic action when using these properties, for example, in the pushover analysis. If this is not approved, then the more drastic measures are necessary, for example, by strengthening the joints. Diagonal bracings are used to stabilize the series of pitch roof mainframes in the land direction of the building. In most cases, the connections of the diagonals are fastened by one or two bolts in a shear 
pair connection. And this usually behaves uh, brittle type behavior. Even in these situations, the designer has to evaluate whether the structure can resist the earthquake action. If not, then just adding more bracing in the length direction of the building may be sufficient to resist the earthquake action. If this is uh, entirely not possible, the designer has to provide the structure with the bracing systems with sufficient energy dissipative properties. When evaluating the earthquake resistance, one of two-story building, all connections need to be taken into account with their actual properties. If the structure cannot take the earthquake action, more bracings need to be added. Or by doubling the bracings in the braced bay. If that is not sufficient, the bracing system needs to be replaced by a more adequate energy dissipative bracing system. Structures designed for vertical loading only, such as storage racking, are often braced in the short direction and unbraced in the length direction. These structures are designed to take vertical loading and the horizontal component of the vertical loading resulting from the imperfections in verticality of the structure. For a storage racking, the procedure to evaluate the earthquake resistance is similar to that of other frame structures. Now, how can we improve the structures for the effects of the seismic loading in general? The effects of seismic loading on the structure is dependent on the dynamic behavior of that structure and the ground peak acceleration at the location of the building. Solutions are dependent on the ductility class of the structure. The ductility class of steel structure can be determined by using the nonlinear pushover analysis and from that to calculate the behavior factor, the so-called Q factor. By using the classification in your code 8, you can see what ductility class is of that steel structure. When the ductility class is low, DCL, in the unbraced direction, you have to strengthen the frame when this is needed in order to take the horizontal forces. When the ductility class is medium, DCM, or high, DCH, in the unbraced direction, you have to strengthen the frame to improve the energy dissipation in order to take the horizontal forces. When the ductility class is low, DCL, in the braced direction, you have to add sufficient bracings to take the horizontal forces when necessary. If this is not possible, you can improve the existing bracing in terms of energy dissipation. When the ductility class is medium, DCM, or high, DCH, in the brace direction, you have to improve the existing bracing in terms of energy dissipation when necessary. In this presentation, I have shown how to evaluate the earthquake resistance of steel structures even in the cases where originally these structures were not designed to resist earthquakes. I also presented some suggestions to improve the earthquake resistance. It is recognized throughout the world that steel is an adequate building material to design structures that have to resist a wide variety of loading, like earthquake actions among others. Thank you.